Chapter 1 Foundations of Kali Linux Arman Shariarian Chapter 1 Foundations of Kali Linux Kali Linux is a specialized distribution of the Linux operating system. It is targeted at people who want to engage in security work. This may be security testing, it may be exploit development or reverse engineering, or it may be digital forensics. The thing about Linux distributions is that they aren't the same. Linux is really just the kernel. The actual operating system and the core of the distribution. Each distribution layers additional software on top of that core, making it unique. In the case of Kali, what gets layered on are not only the essential utilities, but also hundreds of software pack ages that are specific to security work. One of the really nice things about Linux, especially as compared to other operating systems, is that it is almost completely customizable. This includes the shell in which you type commands and the graphical desktop you use. Even beyond that, you can change the look of each of those things. Using Linux is all about making the system work for you, rather than having the system force the way you work because of how it works, looks, and feels. Linux actually has a long history, if you trace it back to its beginnings. Understanding This history will help provide some context for why Linux is the way it is especially. The seemingly arcane commands that are used to manage the system, manipulate files, and just get work done. Heritage of Linux Once upon a time, back in the days of the dinosaur, there existed an operating system called Multix. The goal of Multix was to support multiple users and offer compart mentalization of processes and files on a per-user basis. After all, this was an era when the computer hardware necessary to run operating systems like Multix ran into the millions of dollars. At a minimum, Computer hardware was hundreds of thousands of dollars. As a point of comparison, a $7 million system today, at the time of this writ, ing, in late 2017, would have cost about $44 million then. Having a system that could support only a single user at a time was just not cost effective, thus, the development of Multics by MIT, Bell Labs, and GE was a way of making computers more cost-effective. Inevitably, the project slowly fell apart, though the operating system was eventually released. One of the programmers assigned to the project from Bell Labs returned to his regular job and eventually decided to write his own version of an operating SYS. Tem in order to play a game he had originally written for Multix but wanted to play on a PDP-7 that was available at Bell Labs. Ken Thompson needed a decent environ meant to redevelop the game for the PDP-7. In those days, systems were largely incompatible. They had entirely different hardware instructions, operation codes and they sometimes had different memory word sizes. As a result, programs written for one environment, particularly if very low-level languages were used, would not work in another environment. The resulting environment, developed by a program, Mare to make his life easier as he was getting space travel working on the PDP-7, was named Unix. Eventually, other Bell Labs programmers joined the project, and it was eventually renamed Unix. Unix had a simple design. 
because it was developed as a programming environment. For a single user at a time, it ended up getting used, first within Bell Labs and then outside, by other programmers. One of the biggest advantages to Unix over other operating systems was that the kernel was rewritten in the C programming language. In 1972, using a higher level language than assembly, which was more common then, made it portable across multiple hardware systems. Rather than being limited to the PDP-7, Unix could run on any system that had a C compiler in order to compile the source code needed to build Unix. This allowed for a standard operating system across numerous hardware platforms. In addition to having a simple design, Unix had the advantage of being distributed with the source code. This allowed researchers not only to read the source code in order to understand it better, but also to extend and improve the source. Unix has spawned many child operating systems that all behaved just as Unix did, with the same design. In some cases, these other operating system distributions started with the Unix source that was provided by AT&T. In other cases, Unix was essentially reverse-engineered based on documented functionality and was the starting point for two popular Unix-like operating systems, BSD and Linux. As you will see later, one of the advantages of the Unix design using small, simple programs that do one thing, but allow you to feed the output of one into the input of another is the power that comes with chaining. One common use of this function is to get a process list by using one utility and feed the output into another utility that will then process that output, either searching specify Kali for one entry or manipulating the output to strip away some of it to make it easier to understand about Linux. As Unix spread, the simplicity of its design and its focus on being a programming environment led to it being taught in computer science programs around the world. A number of books about operating system design were written in the 1980s based on the design of Unix. One of these implementations was written by Andrew Tannen. Baum for his book Operating Systems, Design and Implementation, Prentice Hall. 1987, this implementation, called Menix, was the basis for Linus Torvalds' development of Linux. What Torvalds developed was the Linux kernel, which some consider the operating system. Without the kernel, nothing works. What he needed was a set of userland programs to sit on top of his operating system as an operating environment. Meant for users to do useful things. The GNU project, started in the late 1970s by Richard Stallman, had a collection of programs that either were duplicates of the standard Unix utilities or were function. A lie the same with different names. The GNU project wrote programs primarily in C, which meant they could be ported easily. As a result, Torvalds, and later other devil opers, bundled the GNU project's utilities with his kernel to create a complete distribution of software that anyone could develop and install to their computer system. Linux inherited the majority of Unix design ideals, primarily because it was begun as something functionally identical to the standard Unix that had been developed by AT&T and was re-implemented by a small group at the University of California at Berkeley as the Berkeley Systems Distribution, BSD. This meant that anyone familiar 
you're with how Unix or even BSD worked could start using Linux and be immediately productive. Over the decades since Torvalds first released Linux, many projects have started up to increase the functionality and user-friendliness of Linux. This includes several desktop environments, all of which sit on top of the X-Windows system, which was first developed by MIT, which, again, was involved in the development of Multix. The development of Linux itself, meaning the kernel, has changed the way developers work. As an example, Torvalds was dissatisfied with the capabilities of software repos. Itery systems that allowed concurrent developers to work on the same files at the same time. As a result, Torvalds led the development of Git, a version control system that has largely supplanted other version control systems for open source development. If you want to grab the current version of source code from most open source projects these days, you will likely be offered access via Git. Additionally, there are now public repositories for projects to store their code that support the use of Git, a source code manager, to access the code. Monolithic versus Micro Linux is considered a monolithic kernel. This is different from Minix, which Linux started from, and other Unix-like implementations that use micro kernels. The differ ins between a monolithic kernel and a micro kernel is that all functionality is built into a monolithic kernel. This includes any code necessary to support hardware Devi. CES. With a micro kernel, only the essential code is included in the kernel. This is roughly the bare minimum necessary to keep the operating system functional. Any additional functionality that is required to run in kernel space is implemented as a module and loaded into the kernel space as it is needed. This is not to say that Linux doesn't have modules, but the kernel that is typically built and included in Linux dis distributions is not a micro kernel. Because Linux is not designed around the idea that only core services are implemented in the kernel proper, it is not considered a micro kernel but instead a monolithic kernel. Linux is available, generally free of charge, in distributions. A Linux distribution is a collection of software packages that have been selected by the distribution maintain ERS. Also, the software packages have been built in a particular way, with features determined by the package maintainer. These software packages are acquired as source code and many packages can have multiple options whether to include data base support, which type of database, whether to enable encryption that have to be enabled when the package is being configured and built. The package maintainer for one distribution may make different choices for options than the package maintainer for another distribution. Different distributions will also have different package formats. As an example, Red Hat and its associated distributions, like Red Hat Enterprise Linux, RHEL, and Fedora Core, use the Red Hat Package Manager, RPM, format. In addition, Red Hat uses both the RPM utility as well as the Yellowdog updater modified, YUM, to man age packages on the system. Other distributions may use the different package man agement utilities used by Debian. Debian uses the advanced package tool, apt, to manage packages in the Debian package format. Regardless of the distribution or the 
Package Format The object of the packages is to collect all the files necessary for the software to function and make those files easy to put into place to make the software functional. Over the years, another difference between distributions has come with the desktop environment that is provided by default by the distribution. In recent years, distributions have created their own custom views on existing desktop environments. Whether it's the GNU object model environment, GNOME, the K Desktop Envy, Ronment, KD, or XFCE, they can all be customized with different themes and wall papers and organization of menus and panels. Distributions will often provide their own spin on a different desktop environment. Some distributions, like Elementa, YOS, have even provided their own desktop environment. While in the end the software all works the same, sometimes the choice of package, manager or even desktop environment can make a difference to users. Additionally, the depth of the package repository can make a difference to some users. They may want to ensure they have a lot of choices in software they can install through the repository rather than trying to build the software by hand and install it. Different distributions may have smaller repositories, even if they are based on the same pack, age management utilities and formats as other distributions. Because of dependencies of software that need to be installed before the software you are looking for will work. Packages are not always mix and match between even related distributions. Sometimes, different distributions will focus on specific groups of users, rather than being general purpose distributions for anyone who wants a desktop. Beyond that, Distributions like Ubuntu will even have two separate installation distributions per release, one for a server installation and one for a desktop installation. A desktop installation generally includes a graphical user interface, GUI, whereas a server installation won't, and as a result will install far fewer packages. The fewer packages the less exposure to attack, and servers are often where sensitive information is stored. In addition to being systems that may be more likely to be exposed to unauthorized users, Kali Linux is a distribution that is specifically tailored to a particular type of user. Those who are interested in performing security testing or forensics work. Kali Linux as a distribution focused on security testing, falls into the desktop category, and there is no intention to limit the number of packages that are installed to make Kali harder to attack. Someone focused on security testing will probably need a wide variety of software packages, and Kali loads their distribution out of the gate. This may seem Mildly ironic, considering distributions that focus on keeping their systems safe from attack, sometimes called secure, tend to limit the packages. Kali, though, is focused on testing, 